On this cabinet, we're going to install an overlay door. To do that, we're going to use a European hinge. There also are standard spring-loaded hinges that will accomplish the same thing. Um, both of them sit attached to the inside face of the face frame and allow the door to overlay the front of the cabinet. Both of these are a half inch overlay. You can get these that range from insets all the way to like inch and a half overlays. So it gives you a wide variety of options. But I always want to make sure I have that piece of hardware in my hand before I start doing any kind of layout work or any construction on the door itself. So to install this, um, they re the instructions call for a 3 32nds inch uh, gap between the edge of the door and the, the edge of the 35 millimeter hole that I need to drill to put the hinge in place. But I didn't drill a 35 millimeter hole, I drilled an inch and 3 8 So you don't have to buy a specialty bit. If you have an inch and 3 8 Forstner bit, it'll work just great for you. I came over 3 seconds plus then centered a 1 and 3 8 inch hole off of that dimension. So from the edge of my door to the center line of the hole is 11 sixteenths, half of inch and 3 eighths, plus 3 30 seconds. So it's a 30 second more than 3 quarters of an inch. It's a lot of math there, but just follow the manufacturer's instructions that come with the hardware and you'll be fine. So I, I set my hinge in place. I set my sample door on the cabinet, and I like to make a mark. Now I set my square so that I can put my pen to that mark. Now I can make it a little bigger so I can see it. I'm going to put a half inch overlay going down. I'm going to create a half inch overlay on both sides so I have an even reveal on both sides of the door. Half inch down here, half inch over here. Now up here, I, it really doesn't matter what my overlay is. It could be a half, this can overlay a half, this can overlay a half. I can play with that, it gives me some design options. We're going to keep it simple half inch. Here we'll just measure down a half inch. And a half. Now we're going to do a stub tenon and groove door. It's kind of like a shallow mortise and tenon. I know that my rails on this door on typical cabinet doors, you're talking two to two and a quarter seems to be the, the, the common dimension for those parts. So we're going to make a two inch rail. So I'll come over two inches from that mark. Do the same thing over on the other side, two inches in from our mark. And then my groove is going to be 3 eighths of an inch deep. So I'll mark back 3 eighths of an inch and 3 eighths of an inch. So our door width, I can measure from the outside to outside, is right at 12 inches. Our height is 15 and an eighth. And our drawer face should be six inches. Now the other part I need to know is how long the rail is. I'm going to measure from my 3 8 mark to my 3 8 mark. And I actually like to hold my ruler at 10 inches. And you'll see why in a moment. So if I'm at 10 here, I can read over to 8 and three quarters of an inch. So basically you're taking the zero away. It's hard to read the tape right from the end. So eight and three quarter is the, is the length of my rail. So we're going to go over to the table saw 
and I'm going to cut the parts to length and we're going to, we're going to start making our joinery for this door and drawer face. I've attached an auxiliary miter gauge extension to my miter gauge and made a little scrap that I'll use for a stop block. Cut a little chamfer on the edge of that on the stop block. That way you need debris that gets pushed up against it won't will allow, will allow the stock to fully engage and won't mess up your dimensions. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to cut door and drawer styles at the same time, both sides, so I know they're exactly the same length. So I've raised my blade, stacked my two boards, raised my blade above the thickness of the material, and I'm going to make a cut through my fence. Now I can measure from that cut 15 and an eighth and my other dimension was six inches for my drawers. Because I know exactly where that cut is right against the teeth, I can actually use that to measure from. So we'll cut our doors, our door styles first. Slide my two rails up against the stop block styles adjust for my drawer Now you'll notice I, I made these from one part. What I want to do is I want to have the grain run up the door and across the drawer. It adds a nice little touch if all that grain matches. So in one part I got the lower door style, the drawer style, and some scrap. Now we just need to set, the, set those aside. Keeping them in orientation, we'll mark them in a moment. And we'll mark for our eight and three quarter inch rails. And we'll just cut these two at a time. Now we're going to switch to a quarter inch dado blade so we can cut a groove in our parts for the joinery. Before we do that, I just want to show you why we were keeping everything orientated. So what I can do is take one rail or one style for both parts, my two rails, and I just like to do a simple, I can put left, left, and a right. Now we need to cut the groove to receive the panel that's going to be in our door. This door, already glued up and I'll, I'll put some glass in it in a bit, shows us that we've got a couple different, we've got to make sure that the groove is centered in the door in the width of the door parts and is wide enough to receive our panel. Here I've got a piece of 
one quarter inch oak veneer plywood. It actually has an MDF core. There's MDF between the two layers of veneer. Um, that thickness will dictate the groove that we're going to have in our door. We've got some other options. The reason I really like that MDF core veneer plywood is because with the veneer core that I pick up at my home center, it actually measures 3 sixteenths of an inch. Um, that doesn't give me a very strong panel. I think this is a stronger panel and it, it, uh, it's going to give me a better quality door. Um, and we'll, we'll address how we would cut that groove instead of using a dado blade in a moment. Another option would be using half inch plywood. I can cut a rabbit around the perimeter so that the panel will fit in to the door and you can actually create a nice little reveal detail or have the door, the door panel recessed. Either one works, but what it gives you, instead of the 3 16 inch panel, it gives you a half inch thick panel. And this is a good option. So let's talk about making our panel for our quarter inch material. I've got my dado blade set up to approximate center of my stock. I've got my feather board installed, and now we'll make a test cut in a scrap. What I'm most concerned about is the width of the panel, the width of the groove to receive the panel. So that fits quite well. I can see that my, my groove is not quite centered. If I was to simply take the board and flip it around and cut the groove from the other face, my groove would end up being too wide. So I need to do a little bit of setup here, and then we'll make another test cut. That looks pretty good, but there's really only one way to find out. We've ran it through this way. Now what we're looking for with that partial cut is a shoulder that was created by that blade coming into the wood. Right now I can tell that that groove is perfectly centered because there's no uh, exit mark from the saw blade. So I am ready to cut a groove. With the grooves cut to receive the plywood, I need to form the tenons that will also lock in. So to do that, I'm going to switch, change my dado blade so it's a half inch wide. I only need a 3 8 inch cut but you'll see a, I'll make a, a, uh, a sacrificial fence that will make the adjustment and cut very easy and very accurate. I like to use a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF for this. What I need to do is I need to remove the material here and here on this board. Since our groove is approximately a quarter of an inch, I need to remove a quarter from each side. So I'm going to set my rule to a quarter inch and draw a line. Then I can double face tape my fence, sacrificial fence in place. And then I like to throw one clamp on it just to be sure. Now I lower the blade. And I'm going to use about 3 eighths of an inch of the blade. I'm going to cover a little bit more than that, about half of the blade turn the saw on and raise it until the arc of the cut comes up just short of my line. <clears throat> now that gives me a little leeway 
it creates a void in there so when I move the fence over, I, if I need to adjust either way, I'm not trying to get it right on the money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, one of my pieces as a guide. And what I want to do is get the outside cutter, I'll lower that just a touch, in line with that bottom of that groove. It won't be perfect the first time, that's okay. I've got some scrap material. I'll get a couple pieces because it's not always going to hit right on the first time. and I'll raise my blade until that tenon fits right in the groove. Now remember, as I raise the blade, I'm taking an equal amount off both face, so don't adjust too much at one time. That's what we're after. So now that that tenon is made, one thing I want to do, all saws in the middle of the handle have a knob that you can tighten the raise and lower mechanism. Be sure to tighten that because af after making several cuts, that blade may move up or down. One thing to be sure of, you have your styles that go on the so end of the door, uh, end of the drawer, and the side of the door, don't cut tenons on the ends of those parts. You only want them on your four rails. Before you change your setup, test all the fit of your parts. You don't want to have everything tore down and then have to come back and adjust your, your tenons. I will show you a simple technique also for adjusting them later. Yep, a little tight. So we'll just go through it one at a time. So we've got all our parts cut. Let's say you uh, have to step away from the shop for a day or two, um, or you have a couple of joints that might be giving you particular trouble. Um, if you're building a lot of doors, you're guaranteed to have to do some adjusting of these, of these tenons. Um, you can use a rabbit plane, which is a hand plane that rubs against the shoulder of the tenon and, re and reduces the thickness. But a simple trick, some adhesive back sandpaper on a block of wood. So like this joint, it's still a little stubborn. But with just a couple strokes on each face of the tenon, and now that piece goes in and fits like a glove. So I'm going to make sure that everything's fitting right and at the same time, mark out for my panels. So I just simply lay my tenons up on my rails, or up on my styles, and draw a pencil line. Because my panel will run from the bottom of this groove to the bottom of that groove. Then I can measure 11 and 7 eighths. 
And for plywood, I like to cut them about a 16th underside just to give myself a little bit extra room. So 11 and 13 sixteenths. And then the panel will be the same width as your overall, overall rail length minus a sixteenth. So back to 8 and 11 sixteenths. And we'll go cut those for the drawer front. Two and eleven sixteenths. And again, that will be eight and eleven sixteenths. One other bit of sanding we need to do before we can uh, put the panel in place and glue the door up is I just like to take my sanding block and just a couple of passes on each face. Because it'll be very difficult to get in and sand those edges after the plywood panel is in position. The other benefit to sanding like this is I'm bridging that gap. If I use a random orbit sander, I may round over those edges and the joints won't fit tight. So just a couple of passes is all you need. When selecting your material for the panel, you can simply just cut it out of a piece of plywood. You might get something like this, where the grain pattern isn't centered in the panel. Um, if you've got a little bit of material to play with, maybe if you center, here's a glue joint or a veneer seam in the panel. You could center that, use that as a window to find out, find a nice, section of grain that you really like. So here's one I really like, but I want to center that groove. So our panel is approximately eight and three quarters, so I need to come over four and three eighths. So four and three eighths from that seam is right here. We're going to rip this material off, so I need to allow about an eighth inch for the saw blade. So I'm going to set the blade at about 15 sixteenths. I've set the fence to an 8 and 11 sixteenths, and I'll make another cut. Now I want to add to the top of this, we'll call three, our panel is 2 and 11 sixteenths. I'm just going to make add about 3 inches up here. So this will be where our panel's cut from. So I'm going to go to the miter saw and make those cuts. I've finished cutting and sanding the panels and we've already sanded our edges. Now it's time to glue them up. What you want to make sure is earlier before when we placed our lines on the couple rail on the styles to show where the panel was going to be, well if I go back and re make sure those are all marked that also tells me where to apply glue. So I will apply glue from the mark down and then apply groove, glue in the panel, but not getting any on the, uh, the face of the, the edge of the styles. So I just like to apply a little glue right to each edge at the corner. Not too much. And then just a small couple drops in where the panel's going to go. As you can see, there's plenty of glue in the joint. Slip the panel in.
apply glue to the other style. Now we'll clamp it up. I like to keep the clamps just a little bit away from the ends of the rails and the ends of the styles so that when I apply pressure and draw the joints tight, making sure that everything's flush top and bottom, I'm still able to measure my diagonals to check for square. If all my joinery has been cut square, that's really not even a necessary thing to do because it's going to pull everything tight. So I'll double check my measurements and then I'll glue up my drawer face. So with that panel clamped up, we'll allow the glue to dry and then we'll get ready to install them. Once the glue has dried on the door, I can drill the holes for the hinges. Again, there are instructions with the hinges that explain how to position this hole. And now I'm going to install the door. I'm going to take our hinge, insert it into the holes that I've drilled, and I can just use a square against the hinge to make sure everything's where it ought to be. I like to use a self-centering bit and drill my holes. I've left our tape in place so I can use our layout lines to help position the door. So let's switch to our self-centering bit. And I'll line up, I can line up the top of the door with my layout mark, wrap the hinge around the corner, and drill the hole. I've applied a piece of tape to our door style and so I can install the door pole. What I typically like to do is I lay, like to lay out, if I'm going to install a knob, I center the knob along the bottom of my upper rail or I center the handle at the center line, that center line as well. So I've laid out the line to the center of the style. There's our top hole. This pole has centers at three inches apart. So I'll mark that down. When I take the door off later, I can drill the holes and install the pole. The other thing I need to do on the door is put some felt bumpers or rubber bumpers um, so when the door closes it's a nice quiet close. Now let's look at the, the drawer face. I just take, since we have a half inch in between our two components, I just used a half inch spacer. So I'll set my drawer face in position and I want to make sure I'm lined up on the edge and then I can clamp it. Now I'm going to drill a hole through the door, drawer panel into the drawer itself.
the hole I drilled is a pilot hole for some number eight screws. And then I can simply screw the drawer face to the drawer. Unclamp. Slide my drawer out. And take the drawer face off. Clear my tape. I'm going to switch out to a 3 16 inch drill bit. That'll allow for the installation of my cabinet hardware screws. I'll use a little scrap of wood to keep from blowing that out. And drill my drawer face. And now, through the hardware, I can secure the face. So I've tightened up my drawer pull screws. Now, depending on what your application is, if you have a solid drawer face, um, because we are an inch and a quarter, inch to inch and a quarter thick here, your, the screws that come with your hardware may not actually be long enough. You may need to pick some up, longer ones up at your hard home center. So now we can install the drawer. The only thing left, a couple bumpers. And we are good to go.